Hi everyone, my name is Peter and thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound. In this video, I want to talk about the connections between Logic Pro and MainStage, which are both music making applications from Apple. And basically, they, they share all the same music making tools. The difference is that in Logic, those tools are set up for recording, and in MainStage, they're set up for playing live. Specifically, I want to talk about how we can transfer patches from one sound or from one program to the next and why that might be useful. So first of all, let's talk about why you or, and how you would uh, transfer patches from main stage into Logic. One of the things that would be good for this is if uh, you're a live musician, you've developed your main stage sounds or you've uh, gotten some sounds that you like and that you want to use them to record a song. Logic is going to be a much better environment to record. So let's figure out how you can get these sounds into uh, logic. So from main stage, we've got this set up. So I've got a four layer um, setup. This is from synth layers for piano, uh, piano, then pad, a really bright sounding pad, and an arpeggiator. I'm also going to add a little bit of piano effects to it. Okay, so we've got our relative sound volumes. And then, so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to export this patch for use in Logic. Now, there's one thing that I found as I was working through this, and I actually learned a ton uh, working through this process. Uh, some things that I thought were, were true, um, I had to, to tweak and kind of relearn. Um, so what we need to do is, first of all, what I found is that if I just export this as it is, when I open it in Logic, the first track kind of gets lost. So this piano sound wouldn't come through in Logic, and I'm not sure why that's happening, or if I'm doing something wrong, if you know what's going on, you can correct me, but I couldn't find anything on it. So the workaround that I found was to add another channel to this patch. So I'm gonna go up here and add a channel strip, uh, make it uh, an instrument channel strip, create. And then what I need to do is find a way to shift this to being the leftmost channel. So the easiest way to do is to select any channel that's to the left of it. Um, and then I'm going to press Command X for cut. And then with this selected, I'm going to select Paste. So now we have our, our other channel strips in the same order that they were before. Now there's just this extra one before it. And we're not going to set up anything on this because it's just kind of, kind of get lost when we go to Logic. But anyway, right, now we have this set up the way we want it. And this is how it's going to open more or less in Logic. So with the particular patch selected over here, I'm going to go up here to the Patch List Actions and select Save as Patch, or you can just click Command E for Export. Uh, I'll leave that title there, and uh, it's going to be saved to uh, a particular patch, a, kind of a user settings folder. And this, honestly, is a bit of a mystery to me, um, but I think you'll, you'll figure out a way to kind of locate these patches without too much trouble. So with that exported, now I'm going to go to Logic Pro 10. And then I have a, a new instrument channel set up as default. And then I'm going to come over here to my library. And then user patches, not user channel strip settings. That's kind of the older approach to transferring sounds. And it works just as well, but uh, well, not just as well, because this way, um, a lot more things are going to be set up. Okay. So under user patches, I'm going to select main stage patches. And these were some things I, this doesn't reflect the current one. And I found I did have to do this last night when I was working on it. I'm going to come down here and select Refresh Library and then go through that process again where I go User Patches, Main Stage Patches. There's the one that we just set up. So as I click that, now it looks over here like we just have one where we should have four sounds. But as I click this triangle, now we have our sounds going on. Okay, it's all there except for a couple of differences. One is that the, uh, the tempo is different. Uh, so if I change that, then you'll hear the arpeggio happening at the same same tempo that it was in main stage. The other thing is, it is we go back to main stage, some of these channels, like this piano, was set up to go to a couple of send effects or auxiliary um, effects channels, like this reverb and delay. Those do not get copied over when you transfer the patch. And so you'll have to transfer these individually as channel strips. So you'd come up here, select save as channel strip setting, and then you could uh, insert that same channel strip in Logic, and you would just have to manually set your uh, send effects levels. The other thing is that uh, we may have had, uh, I did have uh, some 
uh, controller mapping set up in main stage, those did not transfer to logic. So I'll have to transfer that. Process is a little bit different than what you might be used to in main stage, um, but pretty much just as simple. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to press Command L for learn. That opens this window and kind of lets me know that anything I'm uh, doing right now is going to set up some, some controllers. So first of all, I'm going to click on the piano volume and then just twist the corresponding knob on my controller. Same thing for these other ones. And then I might wanna do something else like set up, uh, say the cutoff frequency for this pad. So I'm gonna come down here, select cutoff and adjust this. So now we see some movement here when I adjust that. So, So now I have the same kind of control that I had in main stage. It's just set up to um, record much more effectively through Logic. Let's approach it from the other direction now, taking sounds from Logic and importing them into main stage. A couple of reasons why this might be useful. Let's say you've been doing a lot of recording for an album and you want to be able to replicate those same sounds exactly in a live situation. Going from Logic to main stage makes that pretty easy. Um, the other thing is that even if you're developing sounds just for main stage, there's a reason why you'd want to do them in Logic. And the reason is that as you're uh, wanting to edit the sounds, it's helpful if you don't have to play at the same time. So what you can do is, is play and record something into Logic on any sound, and then you can really just focus in on changing the sound and editing things the way that you want to. And that's kind of what I did uh, when I was uh, recording the Devotional Tracks album. Um, I uh, played this into it, uh, recorded it in that way, but I was also developing these sounds for, for release as the Glue Pads collection. And so I just recorded everything in Logic. <laughs> And then I was able to go back and edit the sounds and get them exactly the way that I wanted. And then um, they not only were worked for the record, they were able to um, be set up in main stage as patches there. So uh, it, let's say we want to export both of these as a patch into, lo into main stage. So the process is, is a little bit different. What we want to do is select both of them. I have this one selected right now. I'm going to press shift and click this one. And now I, I need to create what is called a track stack. So I, I, what I did was just control click and then select that. Uh, we'll go with summing and create, okay? Now this doesn't necessarily matter what, what it's called there, but what we're going to do is we're going to export this or save this as a user patch. So with this, I can come over to my library now, select save, Let's say we're gonna call this GP1 for glue pads one. And that's our setup there. So now I can come back to main stage and I'm going to create a new patch. And then I just need to find that setting that I just created in Logic and access that. You can search for it in user patches. If you're having a hard time finding it, what you can do is just click on uh, this gear menu select find in library or you can press command F and then just type in what you named it and it finds it for you so click on it it loads that patch into here and this is a little bit goofy over here um, I don't really like that this sum is here so what I'm gonna do is first of all just change these to the output that I need um, for the purpose of this video I'm routing everything through outputs three and four on my interface. So now these don't need to go through the sum. That's just not my workflow uh, for main stage. And so I'd rather ha have that out of the way. And now I should be able to So now a couple things. A couple things are not set up right now. Uh, again, the hardware controllers, I need to set those up so I can just uh, click up here, map parameter, so a little bit different process than logic, but still straightforward. And now I can control those that way. Okay, now again, the, the auxiliary send effects didn't transfer over, so I would need to manually export this as a channel strip. Um, same, that is the same process. So I just click up here, save channel strip setting as, go through 
uh, pretty much the same procedure and then come over here add a channel strip but I would add an auxiliary mm -hmm. channel strip and then I could manually set this to go to that channel strip and that's a little bit different but um, this will get you 90% of the way there uh, one of the things about transferring things from Logic into Main Stage is, is Main Stage is uh, a little bit different environment for music uh, makers that are, are used to just working in a studio environment. Um, I have a pretty good resource I think that'll help you out a lot. If you're getting started with Main Stage, it's a really great platform. It just takes kind of shifting your mindset a little bit um, to get into it um, and not being overwhelmed by all the options in it. And uh, with the main stage keyboard cores, um, I think I present a really logical workflow um, that just kind of helps you get down to making music and getting the sounds that you want quickly. And so it can just, the, the technology can kind of be in the background of it. So I hope you will check that out. And thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. There's a little bit more information on the blog. Uh, if you go to ourworshipsound.com, there, there'll be a post um, that just gives a little bit more uh, information on this process. So thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.